Hello class, this is instructor Mark Dixon, and today I am going to be reviewing with you your project one for business 210, managing and leading in business. As a reminder, you can find the rubrics to all of the assignments by going to assignment information and finding the applicable project or assignment. So today we're gonna to go through project one guidelines and rubric. So at this point in module seven, we're gonna bring to culmination all of the different concepts that we've been exploring throughout the entirety of the course. So specifically, we are going to test through the project one, your ability to demonstrate effective management skills and practice in diverse distributed and collaborative work environments and explain the interrelatedness of the functions and forms of organizations. So the essence there is think about all of the different concepts that we've explored throughout the Sumo web text, which I'll get back to in a few minutes. Um, you're going to go through all of those different concepts and bring them together into a potentially real life scenario. So what that scenario is for this project is that you're going to imagine that you're a new manager at the SNHU pet supply company. That's been our case study throughout many of the assignments this term. And that company has grown from a small local pet supply company into a large organization with locations in Manchester, New Hampshire, and Denver, Colorado. It also employs remote staff that could be anywhere in the country. The manager you are replacing was with the team for two years and left on negative terms. And that's exasperated and already concerning team culture. So you have been asked to present a management plan that's going to address identified areas of concern, rebuild the team's culture, and align organizational practices to leadership. And leadership has provided you with a management brief, which we'll talk about and again in a few minutes, that outlines the key pieces of information you will need in order to make informed recommendations. So what are you going to do with this prompt? So you are going to use course resources. A lot of them can be found in the Sumo web text and then any of the supporting materials that are either in the announcement that I've posted each week um, or within the course modules themselves. And then the information that's been provided to you in the project one management brief, which is embedded into this particular document. So you can get everything you need um, in one place as far as the um, logistical pieces. So that's gonna be in the supporting materials section. And you're gonna use that to develop recommendations that will meet the need of your new team. And again, align with your organization's mission, vision, culture statement, and goals. So we provided in this assignment, a presentation template that's gonna help you to create your slides. Um, there's also a speaker notes template that you can use to outline how you would actually do the presentation. Now I'm okay if you wanna put your speaker notes within the PowerPoint presentation itself too. Um, there is speaker note sections there. If you find it easier to use the Word document, that's fine. You can submit the two different pieces, um, but don't feel like you have to do it that way. I'm okay with it being all within the PowerPoint. So these are the elements uh, that you need to address specifically. So you have ma two main objectives. You have a team management objective and then a communication and collaboration across functions. So within team management, you're going to explore leadership and management, and you're gonna describe leadership and management practices that you feel would be best suited to manage the team. You're gonna explain why you believe these practices are in alignment with the organization's mission, culture, and goals, as well as how they would be effective in improving the team's culture. The next piece is followership, followership, and we've addressed this throughout the course. So here you're gonna explain how you would leverage your own strengths as a leader to strengthen the team's effectiveness and culture. Also, you're gonna explain how your strengths could be used to develop followership within your team. So think back to your assessments that you've done throughout this course. That's gonna give you a lot of the information you need to really build out that section of the presentation. We've also explored decision-making models. So you're gonna describe decision-making models that you believe will be the most effective for the team and management approach and their alignment with the organization, as well as how they would be effective in improving the team's culture. You're also going to address emotional intelligence. So think about the assessment that you did on emotional intelligence. 
practice. You're going to use that to help you describe considerations for ensuring your management practices are emotionally intelligent. So think about, you know, what emotional intelligence is and relate it back to <clears throat> who you are and how you operate. Um, and then inclusive of the diverse perspectives, needs, and roles within your team. So you want to think about how do you bend your style to the parties that you're working with? Then you're going to explain why you believe they are in alignment with the organization and how they would be effective in improving the team's culture. So the next big piece here is going to be uh, communication and collaboration across functions. So you're going to explore forms and functions, which is where you're going to explain how the various forms and functions of the organization impact the team and also explain how the team impacts the various forms and functions across the organization. Now, this choice of words is sometimes um, confuses students. So think about the organizational structure exercise we went through in this class, where you were looking at a proposed structure to streamline communications. That's an example of where you're looking at forms and functions associated with a given organization. The next piece here is communication practices. So you're gonna describe the strengths and weaknesses of the current communication practices being used across the functions of the organization and recommend better ways to communicate that meet the organization's needs. So think about the flow of communication. So how is communication going from the top down? How does communication go from the bottom up? Are there any bottlenecks in the current processes? How would you improve that overall communication? And lastly, you're going to look at organizational mission, vision, and goals. So you're going to explain the general purpose of the organization, missions, culture statements, and goals, and what these three things say about the way an organization should operate. So that's more conceptual. Then you're going to take organizational structure, leadership, and management approaches, and diversity and inclusion practices into account when considering an operation. So you're tying all of these concepts back together. So again, here you have a presentation template that you can use. Your presentation needs to be seven to 10 slides in length. That's not going to include your title or reference slides. Uh, remember that proper APA format for citations will include a references slide. Um, and you also want to do in-text citations throughout. And you can do that in your speaker notes section. The second piece is that speaker note template Word document. Again, you don't have to do it that way. If you want to embed your speaker notes within the PowerPoint presentation, that's fine. Um, I'm also fine if you want to do use the separate document if it's a little easier for you. So the next thing that we're going to work through is the Project One Management Brief. So I'm going to go through that with you. Um, and then we'll talk through the Sumo web text to kind of explore where you can get a lot of your information from. So here is the Business 210 Project One Management Brief. So this is gonna give you an overview of the company. So the SNH, SNHU Pet Supply Company is a 30-year-old organization that's based in New Hampshire um, out of Manchester, and it produces and sells pet supplies. Company has 200 employees in Manchester, 100 employees in a satellite office in Denver, Colorado, and an additional 300 employees who are working remotely throughout the country. The organization has to has had to rapidly expand due to substantial increases in consumer demand over the past two years. So here's some of the pieces you wanna pull out. Organizational mission. The SNHU Pet Supply Company's mission is to provide high quality pet food treats and toys to dogs and cats. And note, if you would like to use the mission statement you created with your group in the module four discussion, you may do so. So you know how we revise that in our discussions in module four, you can use an updated version. You may also, if you want to take the time now after reflecting on it and update it further, uh, feel free to do that as well. Here's your company culture statement. The SNHU Pet Supply Company is staffed by a diverse group of more than 500 employees who love pets and appreciate the joy and friendship they bring to our homes and communities. We are a passionate, friendly group of people who strive to provide high quality products and customer first services across the nation to our customers and their pets. So think back to the prompt where it's talking about the culture statement and where you need to bring this in. This is exactly where you're gonna grab that from and then just use your courses, uh, the courses supporting materials to further hash that out. 
the organizational goals are here for you as well. So the goals of this company are to make quality pet products easier for customers to obtain through decreasing production costs by 3%. So they're trying to be more efficient. Um, they want to increase workplace efficiencies to deliver products more quickly and effectively. And they want to increase employee satisfaction ratings by 4%. So they recognize that there are some challenges with employee satisfaction, and they want to address that as well. You also want to have the organizational structure here. So the organization is divided into three divisions. We have food, toys, and pet supplies. And each of its divisions has its own product development, merchandising, marketing, sales, supply chain, and retail operations departments. Although some of these departments collaborate on many projects, such as nationwide marketing campaigns, they usually work independently. The company also has other departments that cover all three divisions, such as human resources and information technology. This is helping you to understand the functions. Um, how is the structure of this organization? So this is giving you that information. The Manchester and Denver offices are headed by vice presidents, uh, VPs of each location, and most of the remote workers report to the VP at Manchester, although a handful are associated with the Denver office as well. So that's an area you might want to explore. Why is that? Um, each office has its own divisional and departmental managers, and although these managers are given some independence on how to manage their teams, most decisions must be approved by their VPs or the executive leadership in Manchester. Again, that's an area to question um, when we're looking at the effectiveness of this organization. Is that an effective approach? So here's the organizational structure and a text only version of this is in the supporting materials as well. So if you want to make part of your presentation to restructure this similar to the previous exercise we worked on in this class, um, feel free to do that because that, that'll help you if you feel like this structure is not effective organizational communication. So they're giving you that information as well. The company primarily relies on formal communication methods such as email and in-person meetings. However, each, um, each co-located division has its own preferred communication tools. Communication tools vary from comments in live documents through Google's G Suite applications or Microsoft Office 365 to instant messaging tools through Teams, Skype, or Slack, or in-office whiteboards. So here you're looking at, are, are these effective methods? Um, is the formalized way that the organization communicates appropriate? Do you have recommendations on that front? Um, employees and managers often note in feedback surveys that they do not receive information in a timely, consistent fashion, and that more often than not, they hear major changes and in initiatives through the grapevine or through informal conversations with coworkers. Employees on shared services teams um, HR and, I, and IT, also note that the team, the different team cultures and communication preferences across divisions and locations make it difficult for them to collaborate and communicate with their work coworkers. You have a lot of great information here. How can you improve this? What are the different methods and recommendations that you can put into place that are going to resolve some of these potential communication issues? You also have some management approaches here as well. So as the company grew rapidly to meet consumer demands, it experienced rapid turnover. Leaders promoted veteran employees to management roles based on the years of experience. These new managers were assigned direct reports at random, including direct reports from co-located divisions and fully remote employees working on co-located teams. So here, I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint here. <laughs> um, so here, they're starting to, to present you some information that Perhaps with the remote model, the structure isn't working appropriately. It sounds like there may be some issues with the synergy between all these different teams. So maybe the remote team needs to be looked at differently. Maybe they need to be fully integrated in more. Um, think about all those different factors and how you could potentially make recommendations that would improve that process. Uh, many of the new managers have had little management experience, and as a result, the company provided a two-day intensive management training and provided all management managers with a handbook that outlined the standard company management practices. Managers were expected to follow the standard practices in this handbook, and these practices included using authoritative, results-based management style, resolving performance issues quickly based on standard process, and fulfilling tasks related to project management, meeting facilitation, and decision-making for their teams. Again, think about the different concepts that we've learned in this course about different leadership and management approaches. 
do these ones align with what you've learned and what you know to be the most effective way to manage? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, what recommendations can you give them based on what you've learned? In feedback surveys, employees frequently noted that their managers were often insensitive and inflexible, leaving little room for others to have a say in the decision-making processes. They also reported feeling micromanaged. Managers who responded to the feedback surveys noted that they often felt uncomfortable using strict standardized management approaches um, and styles and that the company required these. While management styles and approaches were standardized across the teams, things like productivity tools and collaborative practices were not. So that sounds like an issue to me, um, a disconnect between what's expected of management and what's expected of the team to work together. As the company grew in size, managers saw a continual decline in productivity. Many managers, especially those new to their roles, often stated they felt overwhelmed and underprepared for their role. To address these concerns, leadership created a new organizational goal focused on improving employee satisfaction. So that ties back to that goal that we talked about a little while ago and giving managers more autonomy over managing their teams. The changes have been in place for almost a year and the organization has seen an increase in employee satisfaction. However, your team's previous manager decided to continue to use old management styles, stating that it be was better suited to their personal management style and it would be the most appropriate for their team. So again, you coming in as a new manager and looking at it from how we can we improve things, is that still appropriate or what would you recommend be the new way to manage this particular team? Finally, we have team culture. So your team has been together for a little over two years. Your team and teammates describe one another as creative and capable, but they feel their skills are underutilized. And they have one of the lowest employee satisfaction ratings in the organization. In surveys, their feedback centers around a spe few specific areas, a lack of autonomy, not feeling heard or valued, and abundant miscommunication. These to me would be really good points when you're addressing this from a team improvement perspective to say, here's what the problem is, um, here's what I'm going to do to address it. Because the team's previous manager had maintained the organization's strict result-based management style, team members were often pushed to meet short time deadlines, uh, short deadlines and focus on quantitative achievements. Remember what quantitative is, that's all about the data. They felt as though they had no opportunities to get creative, take initiative, or grow. When they asked questions, expressed concerns, or made suggestions for improvements, their previous manager often shot them down in ways that were insensitive. This caused the team to give up trying. The previous manager also tried to keep members from going outside of their team to get support or to collaborate. The manager would grow frustrated when teammates would communicate with others and come back with new ideas or knowledge of how other teams were operating, claiming this was wasted time and energy. The manager's mentality also frustrated the team around the time of the organizational change. The team felt left out of the loop regarding organizational initiatives. Major announcements and general updates due to the lack of cross-team and cross-departmental communication. Lastly, the previous manager worked from the Manchester, New Hampshire office and would schedule all teams meetings based on Eastern Standard Time, which created scheduling complexities for geographically dispersed team members. So that ties well into communication challenges. Is there a better way of accomplishing communications with those team members in different time zones? How could you as a manager better accommodate your, the entirety of your team to make sure that it's not all about you, it's all about what works best for the group collectively? And while your team members have been feeling undervalued and frustrated for some time, their feedback does not does note that they do like one another, collaborate, collaborate well amongst each other, and each seems to have a unique skill that could be used in addition to their typical responsibilities. So let's go back over to the, um, the actual guidelines for this, pre this project, and I want to go through the rubric with you. So the rubric should tie very well into these key points that we addressed earlier, so the team management and then the communication and collaboration functions, but make sure that as you are completing this project, you specifically address team management, leadership and management, team management, management followership, team management decision-making models, 
team management, emotional intelligence. And think back to the briefing there. Um, there's a lot of emotional intelligence issues that have been at play for a while. You're going to have your communication and collaboration section across functions, forms, and functions. So how is the structure operating? A good starting point there is the organizational structure visual. Communication and collaboration across functions, communication practices, communication and collaboration across functions, organizational mission, vision, and goals. You have all that information in the briefing to start with. Now you just need to build through it. Um, articulation of response means that we're expecting this to be a well-polished and completed assignment. So it should have minimal mistakes in grammar. Um, it should the sent sentence structure should be appropriate. Um, you can use a lot of different tools. Sanu has a lot of um, the writing center where you can submit this presentation and get feedback ahead of time. You can also use other tools like Grammarly.com, which can embed into your PowerPoint presentation and give you some grammar um, feedback as you're actually developing it. And then please don't forget to use citations um, and um, which includes your reference list and your in-text citations. You need to have a references list slide that's going to include all of the different references you used, and you need to attribute sources when you're using their idea. So what that means is that if it's not your original idea, if it's something that you did based on your research um, related to an outside source, which could be the Sumo web text, you want to properly give credit to the party that actually has the idea. Um, so you, in this class, we use APA formatting. Um, I put out a few announcements throughout, about this throughout the course. Make sure that you're using APA formatting for your reference list and that you're using proper APA in-text citation formatting as well. So I, the last thing I want to do before we wrap this up is I just want to go into the Sumo web text. I'll, again, a lot of the core concepts that you're going to need to use related to this particular presentation are going to be based on all of the different modules that we explored. So in module one, we have a brief introduction to leadership. So here is where we understood what leadership was. We defined leadership. Um, we designed, defined what followers were, and we also did our personality trait assessment. In module two, in chapter two of SUMO, we worked with leadership management approaches and followership. So remember that followership is a key part of this presentation. So here you can find the types of managers, the nature of managerial work, planning and organizing, and then also leading and controlling um, the Polk uh, net, uh, framework that's gonna be in here. So you can use those concepts as you develop your presentation. Now we've, heard in the briefing here that there's some potential leadership style challenges. Um, so in chapter three, that's where you can find different information about approaches to leadership theory, leadership styles, and all the different types of leadership styles. So think about what might be a more appropriate leadership style that you would like to implement in this company. Chapter four is going to include the leader's role in organizational direction and company culture. So you have to address the vision statement of the company and the mission statements, um, as well as cultural statements. All the information about what those are and why they're important is in chapter four. Chapter five has the role of emotional intelligence and leadership. So recall from the briefing and then this uh, project rubric, you need to address emotional intelligence. This is where you're going to get a lot of that information. Chapter six is the leader's role in organizational communication. There's some major organizational communication issues at this company. Here's where you're going to find understanding communication. What are the barriers to communication? And what are different methodologies and things that you should consider related to improvement? Um, Chapter seven is leading and decision-making in a diverse workplace. So that's going to include some of the ethical considerations, which you may also want to bring into this. Um, and then next week is actually chapter eight, uh, where we're going to wrap things up through the leadership and career development. That kind of wraps up the course. It's a culmination of everything. Um, so chapters one through seven are really going to give you a good starting point. Remember to not just use the Sumo web text, though. You want to use other sources, which you can either find in the announcements throughout the, the uh, throughout the course, or you can also use other resources listed there. You can also access the SNHU library, um, and you can do some additional research there to support your positions. A good scholarly presentation really should have a, a good amount of, of references associated with it. Um, when we look back here, 
it really just talks about using citations to support. Um, so as a good rule of thumb, I would use at least three to five um, in a presentation like this to support your thoughts. Um, that's going to give you a really solid footing and it'll it'll prove some demonstrated research when it comes to the completion of this assignment. Um, so that's all for this particular um, lecture on this assignment. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. I hope you found this beneficial um, and good luck with completing your project one. Thanks all.